Hey there everybody, welcome back to another episode of What Is, the video series where I give first looks and reviews on video games that I have played recently. While I try to keep these videos as spoiler free as possible, I've come to realize that it's near impossible to do so while reviewing narrative driven games specifically. Due to that, all videos from now on will be annotated and timestamped in the description so you're free to skip to whatever sections you're most curious about and to hopefully avoid any story spoilers you don't want. This episode, we're going to discuss What Is, Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden. Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden is a third-person, narrative-driven action RPG. It follows the story of Antea Duarte and Red McCraith. Both lovers and banishers, they are brought to New Eden to try and cleanse the region from a powerful spirit, later known as the Nightmare. This spirit is a source of a terrible curse that has fallen over the land. Unfortunately, during their mission, Antea and Red quickly get in over their heads, and Antea loses her life at the ghost hands of the Nightmare. Because of the nature of her death and obvious unfinished business, she comes back as a ghost, haunting her lover, Red. However, due to the nature of banishers and their duty to protect the living from the dead, it puts them in a bit of a weird predicament. In this world, ghosts that haunt the living start to leech the essence off of the person they are haunting, whether they knowingly do so or not. Essentially, by Antea haunting Red, she will slowly kill him over time. Red and Antea are quickly faced with a decision, do everything they can to still take care of the spirit that is plaguing the area, with its curse is a given. Then they must choose whether or not to help Antea move on, and ascend peacefully, or do a dark ritual that has the possibility of bringing Antea back to life. And this is where the first tough decision players are faced with pops up. The core of Banishers is all about choice, and the consequence of those choices. If players choose to resurrect Antea, then they must gather as much human essence as possible to ensure the resurrection ritual is a success. On top of the main quest line of freeing the region of New Eden from the grips of the Nightmare's curse, and deciding the ultimate fate of Antea, there are ghost haunts riddled throughout the map and in each of the three main hub areas. These serve as the main side content throughout Banishers. As with any great RPG, the side content does a fantastic job at world building and gives further insight into how bleak everything is due to the curse on this land. The ghost haunts work out as their own little mysteries and neither one thankfully felt like the other. When Red and Antea come across one of these haunts, the main goal is to figure out the facts in each of these cases. This is where the writing of Banishers is at its best. While on paper it may seem like ghost bad, humans good, especially through the eyes of a Banisher, it's almost never so black and white. More often than not, I found myself, after uncovering all the facts of these haunts, struggling to make a decision on the fate of the haunted and the haunter. As the ghost haunts wrap up, players must decide whether to help the spirit ascend peacefully, banish them to oblivion, or go through with blaming the living person who is getting haunted. In almost every single case, an argument can be made for all three of the choices. Ascending and banishment essentially have the same result, but have very obvious different meanings behind them. Blaming the living low, this came with the heavy weight of when deciding this. By carrying out the blame ritual, Red literally rips out the essence from the individual, killing the person in the process. This however is essential if the decision to resurrect Antea has been made. While some of the living persons you come across are real scumbags, most of the time I couldn't even fathom the idea of blaming someone and sentencing them to death. Does my death settle my account? The voice acting across the board was solid and convincing, with some characters having much stronger performances than others. From bell to bell, the performance for Red was absolutely fantastic. It had me asking, why the hell don't we have more Scottish leads in our video games? I could listen to that accent all day long, and if I had the skills to learn an accent, that would be the first one I would choose. Antea's voice acting at first didn't have me sold. I thought it was cold. I thought it was emotionless. That was until she gave Red insight into how she was truly feeling and coming to grips and just gathering all of her emotions with everything that had been going on up until that point. 
and that's when I changed my opinion quickly and fell in love with the overall performance. At that point, I, I wasn't noticing the character growth in, until that point in time. And, and once that conversation happened, once that cutscene happened, I fell in love with the overall performance of Antea alongside Reds. While Banishers is technically an open world game, it never really felt like it until many, many hours into the game. Even then, each area you progress through is fairly linear for the most part. It's not a grandiose open experience like you would find in, say, Horizon Forbidden West. Instead, it was broken down into three different hub areas, only enticing players to come back once they've unlocked skills to unlock paths to different treasures. Which, to be honest, I was perfectly okay with. Too often in the wide open games, I get sidetracked way too easily and won't even get a whiff of the main content until I'm 10, 15, 20 hours into the game itself. Progression is handled pretty well throughout Banishers. Leveling up and completing hunts gives two different types of points to spend on the spec trees, with more trees opening up as you complete major story beats with the quest line. I enjoyed that especially because if I found myself with an abundance of points to spend, but nowhere to put them, it was a good indicator to get myself back on track with the main quest. The points weren't locked in any place either, allowing me to move my points around and try out different builds based on what gear I would find. There was a plenty and a large variety of gear to find throughout the game, and this is where a big bulk of your power will come from. Materials for upgrades are fairly easy to acquire and boost your gear through its six power levels. On top of the stats that come with each piece of gear, there are secondary abilities that come with them, allowing players to focus on making a variety of builds for combat. From focusing on Red's rifle to having infinite spirit so you can beat the shit out of spirits with Antea all day, I found the variety of options actually pleasing. I ended up choosing a build that boosted my attack damage by close to 200% when I had all of Antea's abilities on cooldowns. Speaking of the combat, it was okay. For as much combat there was throughout the game, it was definitely the weakest aspect in my opinion. Like a clunkier god of war for sure. Light and heavy attacks, a rifle, parries, three fancy ghost abilities from Antea are all that's really there at your disposal. Even though there were different builds to help change things up, the combat did grow old and tiresome towards the end of the game. Even after having all of Antea's abilities unlocked, combat felt more like a chore than anything. This is partially due to how little the enemy variety is within Banishers. Not counting boss fights, there are wolves, four types of spirits, and roughly four types of corpses that those spirits can possess. How the game handles difficulty didn't do the combat any favors either. While there are five different difficulties, the jump from the fourth hardest up to the hardest was a massive leap. The difficulties affect how many healing potions you recover after battle, and the timing on some of the different puzzles you'd find throughout the game. While these modifications to the difficulty are nice and a welcome challenge, they ended up giving enemies and bosses way too much HP, which ended up making combat super tedious instead of challenging. The first major boss fight took me 15 minutes to beat on the hardest difficulty, all because I had to sit back at a massive range and chip away at the boss's HP with a rifle. This is due to the fact that the heart box on the melee swing from the boss was insanely massive and had me burning through my potions in the first phase of the fight before having to adjust my strategy. It wasn't hard. It was just time consuming, annoying, tedious, and far from fun. Graphically, the game rarely misses its mark. While it may not be the most photorealistic game on the market, it has a style it's going for and it does it very well. There may be lower textures and places here or there, but where the focus was and where the effort was placed was definitely on the character models. From the faces, from the hairstyles, to the clothing they're wearing, you can see that they put love and care on each and every individual that would come across your screen. In the set pieces, some of the environments you come across, and the wide open vistas that you can see, they are just beautiful in their own rights. I play Banishers on a 2080 Ti, 10,900K, 32 gigs of RAM, and had the game installed on an NVMe SSD. I only experienced two crashes in total, and didn't encounter any bugs that I can even remember. I do however wish the game was a bit better performance wise. I found my frame rate to be all over the place from 60 all the way up to 144 frames per second, all while playing at only 1080p. Nothing ever chugged or slowed down, but seeing that FPS counter bounce around more than a basketball was a bit concerning to me. 
The only thing that varied more than my frame rate was going to be the sound design. It was kind of a bit everywhere, if you ask me. The snapping of twigs or crunching of snow while walking on top of the backing track set the mood perfectly when traversing through the zones. However, the fact that the swing of a sword or a punch of a fist always sounded like a generic thud was really off-putting. I'd expect more of a whooshing sound when attacking a spirit, but nope. It was always the exact same flat thud. I'd imagine if I could hit a brick wall and get audio feedback on that, I'd get the exact same hit sound on that too in the game. Despite some of its flaws, Banishers had me hooked from start to finish. I found myself excited to hop back into the game every time I loaded it up. While it is hard to 100% recommend at this current time, that's only due to the fact that there is so much coming out at the time of posting this review video. I highly recommend picking this game up as soon as you have an opening in your gaming schedule though. I put in just about 50 hours into the game, and by the time I finished it up, I had pretty much everything completed. There's a few things I'm missing on the map 100% completion wise, but I saw all the main story content, I saw the side content, and I cannot recommend it enough. The only reason why I didn't go and collect everything was because I was just now starting to feel the open world fatigue at that point. But that's a me problem. That's not a problem with Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden whatsoever. Thank you all so, so much for watching the video today. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the like button and let me know who you would like to haunt in the comment sections down below. Doing those three simple things helps the video reach new people an insane amount. I'll see you guys in the next one.